Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to discover a great property of the curl. And in addition, we're going to get some more clarification of trying to find the magnitude of the curl. There's some clarification to be expected here as well. But first of all, the great condition here. It says that if F is a conservative vector field, then the curl of F is equal to zero. What greater way to find out if you're dealing with a conservative vector field than to take the curl and discover it's equal to zero, therefore you know it is conservative. So here we have an example of what we believe to be a conservative vector field. The vector field is 1 over y squared only in the j direction. But of course condition that y must be greater or equal to 1 because if y goes to zero you have a, an undefined value there. So here we took the curl and indeed when we check this out we find out that we have 0i plus 0j plus 0k we do indeed have a conservative vector field but let's get an intuitive feel for that conservative vector field and use let's use the same technique that we used before to calculate the magnitude of the curl which of course should be zero using the techniques that we learned so far so first of all, one of the ways in which we can figure out if we're dealing with a conservative vector field is to perform a line integral along a closed path. And you can see that if we do a line integral along this path right here, and you can see that let's say we integrate in this direction, first of all, when we integrate across the horizontal sections, the contribution of that line integral should be zero because the direction of the path is perpendicular to the direction of the vector field. But on the vertical directions, we should have a contribution. However, notice the symmetry. We cover the same distance on both sides, and in one case, we travel in the same direction as the vector field, so that means we get a positive contribution. And on the other side, we move in the exact opposite direction, so we should get a negative contribution, and the magnitude of the two, the positive and the negative contribution, should be equal, so they will cancel each other out, which means when we do a line integral all the way around a closed path in a conservative vector field, we should get zero, and indeed you can see why we would get zero here. But now let's calculate the magnitude of the curl using the techniques we used before. So we're going to pick a point, and then we're going to circle around. First of all, the direction of the circulation. So if I take my right hand and I try to use my fingers to follow in the direction of circulation. Notice I can do that going, and typically the circulation should be in a counterclockwise direction. Notice that if I curl my fingers in a counterclockwise direction, here my fingers go in the opposite directions of the, of the vector field, and here it goes in the same direction. And again, because of the symmetry here, notice that the contribution on one side versus the other side should cancel the, each other out and we should end up with no indication of a direction because here I'm going the same direction, there I'm going the opposite direction, they cancel each other out. So again, the indication is that I should get a zero curl or a zero value for the curl. So then we can do one more thing. We can say that if we take the curl of the vector field and we dot it, we do the dot product with the normal to the plane of the vector field, which means it's parallel to the curl, we should get the magnitude, we should get the magnitude of the curl. And we've learned that this is equal to the change in the vector field when I move in the x direction, plus the change in the vector field when I move in the y direction, divided by the distance of the change. Now here, we have to pay special attention because there's one more rule that we need to be aware of. First of all, let's change from where we are here in the x direction. Notice that the magnitude in the y direction remains constant as I change in the x direction. Now this is very important. I did say the magnitude of the vector field in the y direction does not change when I move in the x direction. So I, that means that the change is equal to zero. Now I add to that the change of the magnitude of the vector field in the x direction when I move in the y direction. So when I move one unit in the y direction, notice that there is no change in the vector field in the x direction, and that's the key to this concept. So notice the component in the x direction stays zero no matter where on the vector field I am. 
There's no X components, so I can move in the Y direction, and the magnitude in the X direction does not change, so there's a zero change there as well, divided by however much change in R, let's call that equal to one, so this is equal to zero, which means the magnitude of the vector field is zero here as well. So you can see, we found out that the magnitude is zero, we can see that the vector field is conservative when I do a line integral, you can see that you cannot indicate any direction in the curl because they cancel each other out. And when we finally calculate the curl, we get a zero result. So there you go. If you take the curl of a vector field and it becomes zero, then you know the vector field is a conservative vector field. And that's how we know.